Welcome to the Concise NetHack video about my mid-game strategy walkthrough in NetHack. The Concise NetHack videos show you what you need to know about specific NetHack areas without wasting your time. This is the second of three strategy walkthrough videos. Each of these three videos covers roughly eight hours of playtime. Rather than showing a NetHack game, I'll just talk through the major steps I take when I play NetHack. You can do things differently and still ascend, but this is the general strategy plan that I usually try to follow. You may want to watch the Concise Neck Hack Early Game Strategy video, where I talk you through clearing Sokoban and the Gnomish Mines. So, these are the steps I take. First of all, I find the quest portal. The quest is a separate branch of the dungeon, accessible through a magic portal hidden somewhere between levels 11 through 16. As you take the stairs to those levels, watch for a message from your role's quest leader pleading for your help. When you see that message, it means the magic portal to the quest is on that level. Don't be rushed by the language of that pleading message. Take your time and prepare before trying to complete the quest. There are several ways to find the magic portal. I typically just run over every space in each room on the level that has the message from the quest leader. The magic portal takes you to the first quest level, the first level of the quest. You can't enter the second quest level until you are at least experienced level 14. If you have less experience than that, you can still clear out the first quest level. And some roles have wraiths on that level. If there's also a graveyard on that level, lure the wraith through the magic portal. To do that, step on or sit on the magic portal when the wraith is next to it. The wraith will teleport with you back to the main dungeon, where it is more likely to leave a corpse when you kill it. Second step, achieve experience level 14. You gain experience, mostly by killing monsters, up until maybe experience level 12. After that, it, you, uh, you won't gain more levels, usually, by killing monsters. Another way to gain levels is to use, use potions of gain levels that are not cursed. Um, I save any gain level potions I find until I'm at least experience level 12 to use them. If you find a leprechaun hall and you have stealth and you can kill the leprechauns quickly, they will sometimes have potions at gain level. To gain level, you can also use succubuses and incubuses, fukubai, and I have a, a concise net hack video about fukubai to explain the details. You can, as I mentioned, also eat wraith corpses, and I have a video about luring wraiths that might help. Some roles have wraiths on that first quest level, so you can use them to sometimes gain a level or two. Next step, complete the quest and obtain the Bell of Opening and the quest artifact. Each role has a different quest and a different quest artifact. To complete the quest, first you visit the quest leader. Since you're now experienced level 14 or above, he will unblock the down staircase if your alignment is good. You fight your way down through the quest levels until you get to the bottom level, which has your quest nemesis, and the nemesis is specific to your role. You have to defeat the nemesis, then retrieve the quest artifact and the bell of opening from him. The quest artifact is a magical item helpful for your role. The bell of opening is required to win the game, since you need it to perform the invocation. Note that when you are back on quest level one, some quest leaders are sitting, sitting on a throne. If you chat with them with the bell of opening in your possession, they'll leave the throne and you can use it like a normal throne. Next step, advance. I advance my luck to maximum and I keep it there. You'll want to carry a luck stone or potentially some other luck item with you at all times in your main inventory. I try to bless my luck stone eventually with a potion of holy water. The reason I do that, there are two actually, to use a blessed luck stone instead of an uncursed luck stone. First, it takes at least two curses to change a blessed luck stone to a cursed luck stone. And second, a blessed luck stone lets your bad luck time out where an uncursed luck stone won't. There are several ways to increase your luck, including throwing identified valuable gems to a colo aligned unicorn. I rarely do that. Instead, I sacrifice strong monsters at an altar when my god is pleased with me. 
if you get a message about a four-leaf clover, it means your luck just increased by one. And I know my luck is at maximum if I sacrifice a strong monster after my prayer timeout has expired and I don't get the message about a four-leaf clover. You know, your prayer timeout has expired since you don't have a hopeful feeling. Next step, explore down to dungeon level 19. Why level 19? Because fountains can possibly give you wishes on level 19 and above. So the next step is use all the fountains and sinks on dungeon level 19 and above while my luck is at maximum. Um, you can increase all your stats from magic fountains, like with a best blessed potion of gainability. So I really like that. There's a chance of getting a wish from a fountain. Uh, you can get a ring from each of the sinks on, in NetHack. And there's a concise NetHack video about fountains and sinks you might want to watch. So a quick summary of what you do with fountains and sinks. For fountains, you quaff it until you, because it may be magic. And then as soon as you get a response other than a cool draught refreshing you, you dip a junk item into the fountain until it dries up. For sinks, as soon as you can handle black puddings, you kick the sink repeatedly until you get a ring. Then you dig down on the sink with a pickaxe and it turns into a fountain, non-magic fountain, so you can dip a junk item. Next step is killing Medusa, obviously without turning to stone. Medusa's level has lots of water, so you're going to need a way to cross it, either by levitating, freezing it, swimming, etc. Medusa will turn you to stone with a single glance unless you are blind or can ref reflect her gaze. So I like to use telepathy to find her. I put on a blindfold or wrap a towel around my head. Then I uh, wear an amulet of reflection. You can also apply a mirror at her. Uh, you can learn about other strategies for dealing with Medusa at nethackwiki.com. Next step, clear the castle level. I've got a couple of concise nethack videos about the castle level. So I won't, I won't say more about that here other than you get the wand of wishing on the castle level. And then the last step is to use that Wand of Wishing to complete your Ascension Armor and get any additional Ascension Kit items that you might need that you haven't found yet. So that's the mid-game strategy. Before you move on, it's good to have many or most of these. I like to have experience level around level 20. I like to have an Armor class around minus 15 if possible. I like to have my maximum hit points above 150 if possible. I love to have a blessed bag of holding. Uh, you can get by with a sack or um, or other bag, but I love a blessed bag of holding. Uh, teleport control is really helpful. Levitation, almost required. Stealth is great. Contra conflict is really helpful. That's all I want to cover for now. I hope you've enjoyed this concise NetHack video about my mid-game NetHack strategy. Thanks for watching.